the zombie trolls just can't resist a good strike. Episode 310 of Trekland Tuesdays Live. With me, Dr. Trek, Larry Nemechek, coming at you from the heart of Trekland through Portal 47 by way of Trekland Treks, bringing you some clarity, sanity, and the big picture in all things Star Trek, or at least most of them. Look, this was supposed to be the quiet hiatus days, but uh, what happened? Well, we had a great trailer come out, got everybody excited to see Boims and Mariner in their live action forms there with Jack White and Tawny Newsome. Everybody is going gaga over the uniforms and how they look and how the black is a little lower than it is in the anime. Okay, that's fine. Um, some of you, if you're on my Instagram, saw what I was talking about, which was those, those graphics behind them. It's like, okay, fine, that's old news. That's old news. Now, what about the episode, which is apparently going to be episode seven? You should also know that all the reviewers and the people with screeners have them. They've sent out the first six episodes, so you're going to see people, hopefully, some of your thought leaders, talking intelligently without being spoilerific about at least the first six and the tone and the vibe and the general level of quality, how it compares to season one. So that's already out there. You'll be seeing more of that. We've still got, what, a little over two weeks? June 15th, <laughs> until we actually get the premiere of the season. For Strange New Worlds, there are trailers and promos out of plenty and teases. And yeah, number ones, are we going to start calling her Una or Una Chin Riley? Are we still going to just keep calling her number one? Is that going to be a generational divide? Who calls her number one and who calls her Una Chin? I don't know. But the court trial is dominating. Some of the other little fun scenes are out there. That's all in the zeitgeist. People are talking about that. There are some, um, well, I know of two crowdfundings that are coming up that I want to tell you about that are for specific uh, projects. I will give you more on that next week, but keep your eyes peeled. We're heading into convention season. Shout out and congrats to uh, Edwin and his team, Edwin Thrower and his team at, at Trek Long Island, our Long Island Trek, which apparently was a hit, and that's great to hear. We need more stuff for the East Coast. East Coast is getting a strange new world premiere event that's okay <laughs> feels like they must have thought pandemic or not that la was getting all the cool events and premieres and things that's totally fine we'll envy you we'll hear what's going on uh everybody have fun that's headed to that and yeah i've got sooner on my radar here and then the big you know comic-con's coming trek vegas is coming we'll see what's happening down the line meanwhile What's still happening? Well, the strike, the Writers Guild strike. Now, with the directors and actors entering negotiations, now with the actors seeming to emulate the strategy of the writers to take a pre-deadline authorization vote to strike. Now, that doesn't mean that when they take this vote that it means they go on strike. They don't do anything until their contract is up. What it does say that if they get to the deadline and there's no resolution or it's not like they've mutually agreed like, oh, we're so close. We'll just keep negotiating like we just had in D.C. with the budget. If they see no chance of anything moving, then that's what a strike authorization vote is. The writers did this and very famously, it's like. It was what, 88 or 89 percent of the writers voted and 93 percent of the 89 percent voted to strike if they didn't reach it. I mean, that's called unity. And that sends us that's a that's a bargaining tactic. It lets everybody know that there is no disunity here. Everybody's on the same page and they're united in what they want. And the actors are voting on that now. Uh, many people urging them to do the same thing that the writers did. And many people looking to see if, I keep saying this is not a strike as in 07. 07 was getting this way. This is even more so. But this isn't a strike about percentages. It's not like we want 10% and we'll give you five. Well, we'll take eight or seven, six, seven and a half. Okay. That's not what this is about for the most part. They're, that's part of it, obviously. This is about an existential, the machinery changed it has not been replaced. The producers don't want to replace it because they're happy. But the writers are saying, uh, the world is streaming now, not network reruns. 
that will affect the the actors that will affect the directors of course this is more on the t this is on the tv side not the motion picture side but the tv side is where the bulk of the work and the writing and the acting and the directing is doing is happening and that's what's going to happen that's what's going to affect the IATSE crews of all stripes and those guilds and even the teamsters the drivers so yeah it's you've seen it. we're talking about maybe the directors and actors who are up this year in this the trio that it always is set up this way if there's a triple strike will that bring the producers to to bear because what's dominating this is not it's not just the producers it's especially the new tech influence the silicon valley wall street finance tech influence on at netflix and to a lesser extent amazon and hulu and and down the line that said as in 07 i've been doing my part here you're starting to see others pick up on it about reporting on not just the strike and the issues but hey here in trekland our role in the theme strikes that happen and we just had it's been well it's been it's going on two and a half weeks now but two weeks ago friday we had a, a what may 19th had a huge first trek theme day three four times bigger than the one in 07 that's probably because there's been three or four times more star trek output and writers involved just since 07 which is amazing since most of those years were the fallow times when there was no star trek happening period or it was the movies, three three weird little corner movies that didn't care about connecting into the mainstream of Star Trek. The bulk of writing episodes, even with short seasons, it still hasn't equaled those years. And we're missing some folks from those years. And I need to also say about today, uh, happy birthday, as they say, heavy heavenly birthday to the great Michael Pillar, who would have been 75 today. I'll have some things to say about that online a little later, but I um, want to make sure we remember him. And he would for sure be out there picketing himself, supporting his staffs, supporting all the new writers of any kind, much less those that took up the Trek mantle. He would be out there walking side by side with his good buddy Ira uh, and others. Um, sorry, <laughs> I got a little verklempt. No, that's that's the thing. So what's funny is we're sitting here in our hiatus time. Got start, Strange New Worlds around the corner. You know, the Strange New Worlds that was written two years ago and filmed a year ago. What can I say? We're getting now. Star Trek, like a lot of shows in this streaming era of the dragged out process, we won't be affected until spring next year because of the stockpile and the and the dragged out way that these shows are produced and then aired or dropped but what's funny is as we talk about star trek strike day even on my channels it's it's amazing i had just started to think oh silly me the last year or so star trek had become popular star trek picard was so beloved strange new worlds going back to episodic format i think it's still toronto made it's still canadian <laughs> but between those two between i think the overwhelming reaction to lower decks uh the snarky side of fandom and i'm gonna say even prodigy continues to amaze folks that didn't take it seriously which i understand why but especially as the second half of first season wore on people were amazed so increasingly we've come a long way since the days of 2017 and the troll and bot armies were routinely attacking everything you know and i mean separate from legitimate criticism because brother there's been legitimate criticism to be made over the years probably in all the series but what got me was i never stopped to think didn't happen in 07. in fact 07 was the time when the writers did such a good job in and out of star trek to uh, get the public on their side it was the first social media strike we've talked about this before this one even so much more we're all so friggin savvy about how to use our socials and they're doing a great job of it and a lot of our star trek writers on the line as we've talked about as i have streamed with live and and here on the show on our sixth anniversary show bill wolkoff go back and watch it if you can no we've i you 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 get wrapped i don't think we're in a bubble in an echo chamber here but you get you get to thinking that people have appreciated 
the elevation of peak TV the last 10 years. I don't think the overall quality of television, and not that it's all wunderbar, but there used to be so much more hack writing filling up TV, even when we just had the three and four network, the four channel universe, I think so much, especially in the one hour dramas. And I, you know what, probably the comedies and the dramas both. I just feel like the, the writing is so much more heightened now and the acting and the production value. What's happened in the last couple of weeks since strike day just kills me to start with. If you are not familiar with it, I don't know how, Here's the reels on my Instagram. I wanted the one in the middle. Can you see that? 133,000 views. For a simple 10 second little reel, it's a shorty, it's hardly a reel even. It's Mary Chifo, the great Mary Chifo, our mother Klingon, Laurel. If you hadn't seen it, it's very simple and it's very cute. It's very Star Trek, and it's very... One more time. All right. Very simple. It was cute. She did it at the time. We shot some more. I cut that down. Did a th you know, I did a thing and did a thing. What is amazing to me is that you saw that right. It's last night I did a thing and it's gained some more. For some reason, whatever the appeal of all that, uh, it's jumped up to 133,000 views. Now, you know, it's easy to view something. You're scrolling through, whatever. But even so, it's had, can you see this? It's had 11,800 likes. That means somebody bothered to hit a like on it. I Okay. Of all the things I've ever put on Instagram, none of them were like Oscar worthy. Uh, some things I might've put more effort into. Some of them were just updates and things, not so arty, but I'm kind of 154 people commenting on that. This is all just a lesson. I'm sitting at what to think of. This is, this has just boggled me for several. Number one, it's very cool. So whoever, watched and thanked and was on my Instagram. That's cool. It's a quickie. You know, if you go to the full video that uh, we did, that Scott and Kyle did such a great job at 15 minutes. I was bragging on it last week. It's on my YouTube. You can go over. We've moved things around. It's now or easy to find. It's in the top row. Uh, this is part of that, as well as the other funny thing we put up with Aaron Waltke showing off his, he was a union man, O'Brien Pickett sign. And right next to him is Robert Wolf, who actually co-wrote it with Ira in the Bar Association on DS9. Another fun moment that was just, you know, something unique from the day. And a day full of unique moments that are also captured on the stills we looked at last week and here and uh, the video itself. Okay, but for some reason, this just took off. Now, for the most part, look, it's everybody loves Mary Chifo. Who doesn't? It's great to see everybody loves Klingon being spoken live off the cuff and very professionally, although I saw some people critiquing her Klingon. But you know what? If you're if you're going to let Jimmy Dewan get away with his Scottish over the years. In fact, somebody even called it Scottish Highland <laughs> Klingon. Uh, that's cool, too. So what? it's pro strike. It's pro writers. It's we love Mary. It's cute. It's a cute idea. She flips her sign, says the English, and says the Klingon. She invokes the Klingons on behalf of the writers. I mean, what's not to love? But the fact that so many people, you know, it's it's gone viral. Basically, it's tripping. It's doing the thing on the good side that's fun. On the bad side, it's why we've wound up with the politics we've had the last 10 years and some of the social animosity and so much, uh, you know, whatever, depending on the platform, teenagers feeling depressed because they're not megastars, whatever it is. In this case, it's been on the fun side, the fun side of algorithms and the magnets. And that's fine. I don't know what that does for me. I, there's not a little, there's not a little meter till throwing out a nickel every time somebody <laughs> views, right? But what I have noticed, what I have noticed, and this is what, here's where we are today. This is where we got the topic for today. Um, I'm scrolling through the comments. These, 
154 comments, like 10% of the nearly 12,000 likes, you know, uh, 10% of, of the views of the 132,000 views now. And everybody's having fun. Everybody's making fun or having fun or laughing, uh, saying it's cute, it's adorable, doing klingon -y jokes, whatever. Everything I just pointed to, the, whatever people are enjoying about it, they do. And yet, you scroll along and you get, and you, you know, you can always tell. I know these seem to, sometimes I feel like even on Twitter, the bubble that you're in that you've created from your friends, sometimes you forget to like, what's public entry, what's not. I, I liked coming down the side of public entry. I don't like to ban people and block them and all that. I've probably, I've done far more in the last six months to a year than I did the whole first 10, 12 years. Only until the last few years. But then you've got, and I'm not going to glorify, I'm not going to put it up here by graphics. I'm not going to mention handles, but here's the tip. You're scrolling along and scrolling along and enjoying reading what people are saying and having fun. And then somebody jumps in to say, like, we don't remember the last four years. The terrible, why four years? I don't get it. The terrible productions, the lockdowns, the lives destroyed by Hollywood get effed. Like the lives destroyed by Hollywood? What? Um, yeah, and you have somebody calling them out. Uh, I don't understand that one. Um, and then the guy attacks the guy who said, we don't understand you. So I don't know. Is that on the... Is that on the somebody got off their medication scale? I don't know. I don't know. So you're like, okay, well, there's a, there's a wacko. Okay, you're scrolling along and scrolling along. Then you get somebody who maybe takes a maybe takes a issue with your interpretation, right? Um, it's fun. The Klingon warriors would break your spine for bringing such dishonor. <laughs> and then somebody says, Klingons don't like worker exploitation. Are you sure you you watch Star Trek? This person comes back. Klingons are also a proud warrior race. Are you sure you haven't watched Star Trek? Because striking and protesting aren't warriors' traits. Also, Starfleet and the Federation are both a meritocracy, not the communist utopia you simp for. <laughs> okay, there we go. Somebody had to say simp, which is a code word for, you know, I, I, I my feet are on the ground, apparently. I live in the real world. Um... And somebody pointed out that workers' rights aren't really found in communist societies today. Um, it's more warrior than either of us are behind a screen, with you not even knowing how communism and work... Okay, fine. There, There is your standard back and forth, right? But there's another one that just is interesting. You just wonder about what somebody's... what What life has been like for them recently. Somebody else with a bizarre name, Handel way too long. Talentless writers boycotting vapid and shallow shows. Oh, this is going to be a broad swath. Let's just indict all entertainment and then, you know, the bosses and the workers. Nothing of value has been lost since the strike. I commend them to continue not working and the shows to cease existing. And somebody said, uh, I said, and I commend you to do some basic research before you post and know that many, if not most series are stockpiled and won't be delayed for audiences until fall or even next year. Which is why several shows have already had to cancel showings, right? Uh, and I eventually said, well, you're seeing the live shows now, and depending on what it is, there'll be fresh shows for several months. Anyway. Somebody else says, you know what? The producers are part of the problem, but the writing quality has been downhill for over a decade. I, I kind of think just the opposite. I think there's more voices getting out the the, the uh, competition is huge I, the what do we call it peak TV cinematic TV I mean sure there's things better than others but I just don't think we've had quite the direct until you get way down in the poor channels that aren't afford to spend much but there is so much that people people are going to be watching things fresh and new for for years to come that are long gone from being an active production same person. Uh, AI is inevitable. Embrace your future masters. Uh, I'm not going to go down that road. Um, <laughs> change your pronouns to dull, witted, and buffoon. Then go watch a Mocklin P? I Okay. 
the Orville? What? Okay. I, you know, they just start spouting. You're spouting. You're like, okay, well, I thought this might have been a real person with an idea, but it's obviously somebody working off a script. And then they're arguing about AI. AI won't affect me. Um, it's just... You know they're just going to find someone else to write their woke, vapid shit, right? Your problem's not with the writers. It's with the market. And then then throws in some Klingon, which may or may not be accurate. I don't know. Nobody's watching. Nobody cares. There's a reason Picard lost over half its viewers after the first few episodes. These writers want 150000 minimum to produce Mocklin's Dungeon Fantasies. Okay, again, with the... But that's, but no, third season Picard is the first series in ages, Trekker otherwise, that, that has, or one of the few otherwise, that has, that had higher numbers for the finale than for the premiere. I totally get that. People, a lot of people felt burned by the first two seasons of Picard. It had whatever level it had. We all know this. We've all sat, we've all watched this happen. Now, this person may have been imprecise, perish the thought, and meant the whole series and meant season one, and they just have been too lazy to keep up with what's... I don't know. But that was like, what? Somebody else here talks about it's not the money that they're asking for, it's the exploitation, that they've made a ton of money and it's all going uphill and not to them. Um, I love what they say. Regardless of your opinion, all we're saying is that if a network is going to make money off a show, they should pay the people that made it, especially if the way they ch they devise to pay them has completely become moot and needs a new a new tweak. Also, regardless of your opinion, Star Trek Picard has made over twenty million dollars. If you really want some Fox exec, which isn't Fox, different whatever. If you really want some Fox exec to buy his fifth helicopter, then just say that. But he probably won't let you write. It. No, I want, but this is the conversation. No, I want both the writers and the shows to collapse. Okay, so now you're both pro-exploitation and anti-art. Got it. No, you're gaslighting. Into, okay, so it goes off the rails. I'm just, you know, I know, I know. Where have you been for the last 10 years, Larry? I know, I know. It was just amazing to see it to that extent, to that this back and forth. Look, I don't want to feed a troll any more than you do. I know the rule book and the playbook. So just allow me five minutes here or more, maybe 30 minutes, to just be agog at this is what happens <laughs> when you sit at the big boy table. I, 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 guys, I am not, I, heaven forbid, I'm going to be an uh, Instagram influencer. But... I had this, this is all about Mary Chifo's <laughs> 10 sec picket sign flip. <coughs> picket sign flip with English and Klingon. So when the numbers got big enough, just by the sheer mathematics of it all, the odds and statistics, I started attracting enough to be on the radar to draw this kind of trolling or botting even. It's it's trolling. It's not bot. It's It's not automated. So I, you know, I'm sitting, I know intellectually, don't engage. Don't give the trolls what they want. Don't feed the trolls. Part of the reason why the, the Nick, yeah. Uh, bait, <laughs> lemming. Even when they have a comeback, it's specific. It doesn't make any sense. It's kind of like, uh, kind of, the logic is kind of like, like you broke that vase and it's all laying there in pieces and someone needs to get the glue and glue it back. But do you really want to spend the time and effort to do that? Um, but I was like, well, this is weird. Okay, I got sucked in. Okay, I knew it was a troll, but I thought maybe it was just somebody that had just, maybe it's just a hermit who thinks they love Star Trek and they just can't get used to anything being made in the last 20 years of whatever the stripe is. Because I said it, we got a buffet now. If you if you just fell off your chair, love, love, loving Picard, then you can't say that the you know you can't say the stuff people would say in 2017. And if you're somebody who thought that Picard was was sweetness and light the third season, but once it's washed away, the sweetness dissolves in the rain. Someone left the Picard out in the rain, and the cake dissolved, and there's nothing left. 
you still may go back and say, but strange new worlds. Oh my, I can't wait for see, you know, whatever, whatever it is, prodigy. You can't take that away from me. Lower decks. Ha ha ha. I love it. I, there's not a single minded one size fits all cookie cutter Star Trek out there. And there can't be that kind of reaction. And it's an evolution. You can't lump seven years ago with now. You can't just put it all in one big box and say there. We've had way too much gradation, spectrumizing. Anyway, it's like I'm watching the high art of trolling on my page in my channel of something that went ballistically viral. And yet I'm looking at here maybe a couple dozen comments out of, what did I say? A couple dozen out of 154 comments out of nearly 12,000 likes. I'm, I mean, I'm not going on and on about this one piece, this one post in the numbers. I, I'm not, I believe, I'm not bragging. This is like a one in a million. If I could, things would be way different if I could do this with everything I ever touched. And that's not going to happen. I'm thrilled. It's funny. It was cool. It's like watching it now. It's like accidentally drilling an oil well in your backyard and watching it gusher for a while. But the fact that that enabled the percentages to line up to where, guess what we've got in our backyard? <laughs> guess who's uh, guess who's coming to dinner? And there's some snark in here. People are trying to out troll the trolls. I'm not demanding 150,000 for 40 weeks of work. <laughs> That's not the way. Anyway, I don't know if any of you all got over to, to my Instagram and happened across this. I mean, if you haven't, fine. You know, like the channel while you're there. Most people are just having fun, you know, dip, dipping their toe in the Klingon water and having fun with that or whatever, trying out their Klingon, just thinking it's cool. Ha, you know, glory to you, to the writers union and the strike. Glory to you and your house. Glory to you and your picket line. Uh, it's, you know, they're just having fun with it, but I just, it's like, what kind of hunkered down, you know, socially hermitized person has to come out of their cave figuratively and go that direction. I, somebody who's just got blatant, I don't know, jealous, you know, they have to express their jealousy of a writer's craft. What's funny is the writer, you know, they're not like the actors and they're not like the directors kind of coasting along above it all. It's we're talking about the neurotic writers. <laughs> Even when they've got a hit or they get they get producer status and payment and they can pitch and they can be their own creator producer. They're still kind of <laughs> they're still waiting for the hammer to fall and somebody to cut the cord. Anyway, in a week with so much happening and yet we're still kind of treading water. I, I just found myself thinking about this more and more. It was a fun little moment I thought I'd share with you. But at the same time, this went viral. That's what enabled. That's what brought the... That's the Doomsday Machine's defensive sphere activating. Only it's like enough numbers. I don't know. I, I It's just funny to me. I don't know. Have you ever found yourself in a chat thread where things just went... And you can tell when you actually, when you actually try to, if you don't shut down, which I always urge people not to, unless something is, just, if something is just abusive or, you know, pornographic or racist, misogynistic, whatever, 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 you know, when you can instantly tell somebody went there or somebody's bot went there, you, you have my permission to shut that down, block that, get that reported out of there. But if it's someone who feels like there's a shred of, of brain power that's actually real and organic happening there. And you want to just, what we used to call that? Oh yes, a discussion. <laughs> um, and you come back with some facts like I was doing there with some, oh, I don't know, ratings facts. And if they, if they react to that and, you know, compromise in their position or they go, oh, I didn't know that. But if they just double down, well, they could very much be organic and they could very much not be a troll. They could just be someone who hates being shown that there's a piece of what they say might not be. You know, some people, ego can't take it. But then if you just have that feeling that you're just going in circles with somebody, well, welcome to troll land because they're too afraid to realize their point's not going to happen. And yes, the bottom line is, the whole point is, whether it's being paid by a foreign power 
or it's just somebody who's yeah uh is another example of why we need better better mental health care in this country um it's somebody who gets off on the chaos they get off on just being the you know the the good old cute word for this used to be curmudgeon uh when i was covering local news and i'd sit in city councils and school boards and you'd see the person that it didn't matter what it was it didn't matter who it benefited it didn't matter that it benefited every single person in town or every single person with kids in school or maybe even the whole it didn't matter who it benefited they were always as my uncle used to say they were always in a ginner they were just against everything no matter what it was <laughs> just no 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 are they afraid of change no are they afraid of higher taxes no it's like it does after so many years it doesn't matter it's just they're just in a ginner and maybe that was a real live troll back in the day maybe in our modern way of looking at things that's what i should how i should think because i think some of these people are very human folks and i also think if you ever get the chance to meet somebody live then that's not that's not what happens the thing is whether or not it's a matter of money or logistics you know if you had a, a little club meeting on every corner <laughs> where cost and travel was not a, a I, do they ever come out of their cave? Is this the whole way that, you know, you can't get into people's heads. So then you're into percentages and odds. And, and like our friend, the USC grad student, the second year I was doing this, did that, did that report about Ryan uh, Johnson and his Star Wars movie and actually whittling down the tweet, the tweet overload, the negativity and the trolling to actually put numbers to this, try to get his hands around it. And, cut it down to yeah we're talking about maybe maybe 10 percent 10 percent bots 10 percent trolls you know and the rest of the legitimate criticism same as it's always been maybe a little more than it's always been it's just that with multiples everything feels you know suffocative <laughs> feels exhausting and like it's sucking all the air out of the room and taking over the internet that's not what happened here this was very much in the diminutive numbers and maybe somebody is just, you know, life has not been kind and they're just going to take that negative view of everything. And it's well within the realms. In fact, this is far less than what I think the, the stats would have had it be, especially since I've gone viral, apparently, and crossed so many radars. Anyway, um, I don't know. What do you think? What's what's been your experience? I mean, we've been dealing with this shit for 10 years. We've it's been back in our face especially since the beginning of discovery and you know i know you know you know you know i know that you know that i know there have been mistakes made with discovery it's gotten better a lot of people yeah not their cup of tea and at the same time i know lots of people live breathe and die by discovery i'm just saying that was a hard path out of the gate a lot of it was just stupid the whole two women of color in the first scene i'm sorry if that drove you crazy then you deserve to have been driven crazy you missed the you missed the textbooks you missed the memo on star trek somewhere um but the confusion of people with legitimate gripes versus all that kind of garbage and then that garbage on steroids or on automatic and we've had years of that and we got adjusted to it and it's what we got three four years after gamergate and after watching the whole star wars social debacle and you name it go down the line i thought we had kind of passed out of this realm but lo and behold it's like the price tag for having popular fun the numbers are going high star treks is that you're reintroducing the bandwidth <laughs> for those percentages to creep up again whatever they are five percent ten percent in real life what do you think what what's been the troll and bot situation for you in your trek fandom or in general i know political whoa it is what it is but um, you, you tend to think in your sci-fi spaces, in your Trek spaces, that that's not going to happen. Again, I'm just kind of curious. Meanwhile, we have so much to be thankful for, so much to look forward to. This freaking strike is probably going to drag on and on and on because of the new players on the other side of the table who are not of the entertainment industry. They've arrived via big tech and via Wall Street, and that's going to complicate things. So we will see if we wind up with a double whammy strike or even a triple whammy strike.
and how many sympathetic uh, in solidarity others are acting independently, the Teamsters and the crews and the tag animation writers. And as in here in LA, uh, the government, SEIU government workers and the some of the food unions. I mean, other people who are outside the entertainment world were starting to um, to be in solidarity in March too, at some of the big, big events. We will see, we will see. Meanwhile, here in the little microscope of Trekland, <laughs> some things never change. Congratulations, you're big enough to have this many views and the trolls are back, apparently. It's just, it's just the pie got bigger and so did their slice. I don't know, what do you think? What do you think? Let me know if something's happened to you. Meanwhile, thanks again for joining us. Meanwhile, speaking of the pie getting bigger, I wanna thank these folks for contributing a part of their pie to mine. <laughs> This is our Trekland, um, our Trekland Tuesdays Live Patreon. You can get into it easily. So first off, thanks to our TTLers, okay? Diana Hopkins, uh, Robin Wilson, Lawrence Todd, Anne-Marie Siegel, Justin Porteous, Galinda Bruton, Chris Jiggins, Pranakasha Productions, Comedy Forecast, and Andrew Jasimski, and our live wires, yeah, Robert McLean, Byron Bailey, J.R. Poole, Hubbard Gunn Johnson, Alan Hoenzi, Dave Gregory, Tobias Rex, oops, Donna S. Runyon, and Casey Shevsky. Thanks, gang, for doing that. Uh, if you're interested here by the end of the month, hurry up. You can do it today still. It's five bucks and ten bucks. That's a shout out. And the ten buck folks, the live wires get access to our earlier, the first generation of Portal 47 backstage interviews, folks you've never heard from. Uh, it's still the case with Portal 47. You can do this at patreon.com slash Trekland Live. Thank you all for doing that. And, you know, we've gradually been expanding the Trekland media empire. That's good. And, of course, as we approach summer and fall and warm weather, if you are coming to L.A., business or pleasure, let us do your own customized away mission. You pick the places, I will help you out. We will host you, guide you, get you lunch, a quick lunch. We will pick out the four places. I'll make sure it's all going to work, whether it's a weekday or a weekend, whether LA traffic is horrible, whether your place is closed. Oops, we'll pick another one. Do all that in advance so you've got the best day ever, or maybe even two. Let me know. TrekLineTreks.com. Something else you could see at our site. Hey, uh, speaking of the new week, there is a new Trek Files out today as always when we're in season on Tuesdays. And again, we're welcoming back David C. Fine, the executive producer on the motion picture 4K restoration project with another, we found a wonderful little letter in Gene's files about somebody who made, who probably did not also get credit at the end of the movie. And it's the door opening to a wonderful story. If you have not heard it, I heard about it back in the day when I was a kid but it's still there um, about the projectors on the bridge monitors and the company that made them. And well, you can listen to it. Uh, David's back with me. You can get it at the Trek files at Roddenberry. You can get it. You can find the links on Facebook is the best place. Also the document. In fact, you can find the audio anywhere. Hey, something I never talk about, but look, the new issue of Star Trek Explorer, the official magazine or the Titan magazine as a, I've written for Titan in this magazine since the late 90s. My column has been in there for 20-something years now. Actually, like 25. Um, the new copy's out. I've got my column in there and all its pieces. Lots of There's fiction since they rebranded as Explorer. Uh, there's fiction in there as well. Just a shout out. It's at your local book place. Or, you, you know, you can get you can subscribe as a PDF and have it be totally digital. Yes, you can. And of course, up and down the line, I'm Larry Nemechek on Twitter and Mastodon. I'm Larry Nemechek's Trekland at Facebook and Instagram, like we were talking. Please come over and uh, like and subscribe there. Also on YouTube, if you haven't already. Portal47.net, tomorrow's our guest night. We're going to have the Portales barely know this. Portal47.net to find out, read all about it, and join. But um, this month's telebriefing guest night guest is Chad Rubel, who has been an editor on Discovery and Short Treks. Yes, more modern era folks. <laughs> I thought the day would never happen, but uh, we're finally starting to get behind the scenes folks in. 
now from, from all the shows. That is it. I encourage you to come over and look and check all of that out. Thanks so much. If you are on YouTube watching this later on, great. Leave a comment. Drop it in below. Uh, you can comment just like everybody chatted live, except you weren't live with this. It would have been great if you could have been. Maybe you can. Some Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific for Eastern. Hey, 9 UK time, 10 Central Europe. We time it so that the world can join us. All that to say, gang, if you are leaving us right now, until the next time we meet up, uh, hey, <laughs> stay healthy. Do all the things. Uh, stay woke. Check your sources. And, uh, oh, truck well, everybody.